All right, today we're gonna talk about why people are poor. We're gonna do a deep dive into why people are poor, why people don't make a significant amount of money. And for me, a significant amount of money would be $75,000 to $100,000 per year. That income in most parts of the country will afford you a pretty good lifestyle. Recently, I put up a video talking about 75% of Americans make less than $35,000 per year. And there were many people who were shocked, who were shocked. They couldn't believe it. They were just like, there's no way that these people could live on that little bit amount of money. There's no way. And I saw it in the comments over and over again. I personally don't know anyone that makes that kind of money. And I will say that you're absolutely wrong. The waitress that waits on you, the gas station attendant, the people who come to do things to your house, the Amazon delivery drivers, these are people that you know, they only make $35,000 a year or less. And one of the things that we're gonna get into is why people don't make, once again, what I consider a significant uh, income. Um, $35,000 a month, that's a really bad month for my business for me to make 35,000, that's a bad month. So we're talking about money that I personally make per month is a, is a yearly annual salary for 75% of the country. And we're gonna get into it. So shout out to the nerd tribe, shout out to the people who leave these well-constructed, intelligent, logical comments I absolutely love it because there are some of you who be going hard and I really, really appreciate you. And also, one of the things that, uh, cause uh, you know, recently it was Valentine's Day and I did something for my girl and a lot of people seem to love that action because um, one of the things that is happening, cause uh, I was watching Alan Roger Curry. Actually, I'm gonna come back to that and I'm going to swing to this a friend of mine who's a recruiter who saw the video called me and we literally have been talking about how much money people don't make for years in a, in a lot of people don't really want to understand that all right so now we're swinging back to alan roger curry alan roger curry put up a video talking about i did not know alan was 59 years old alan will be 60 years old in another year and his wife is 31. And he was just talking about that most people, uh, most women, regardless of age, want a man to make money. My girlfriend is 32. I am 55 years old. There is a 23 year age gap. And for the most part, we actually get along quite well together. And Alan was talking about how he gets along with his wife so well together and how other people have noticed this and this kind of comes into why people are poor i know that you're like this is a radical departure from what i'm talking about but this kind of comes into it because one of the reasons and once again another little departure if you as a man have the ability to go up and talk to a woman that you find attractive and tell her, hi, my name is William. I find you really attractive. I want to get to know you. If you had the ability to do that, your dating life would literally transform. And Alan Roger Curry and I actually discussed this. Why so many men will not do it? And it's the fear of rejection. Now, as an entrepreneur, I really don't care about rejection. Uh, I think I told this story, I'm gonna tell it again. My current girlfriend was someone I used to date while I was dating other women. And when I brought her over here and I convinced her to go out to dinner and went to dinner and I wanted her to spend the night and she told me, I don't want to be your girlfriend. I don't wanna be your girlfriend and please walk me to the car. So I walk into the car and I kept at it and I kept at it and I kept at it. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm starting to cook with gas. See, 
This is one of the reasons that so many people are poor. When they run into difficulty or they run into hardship, they stop. Now, this girl actually told me that she did not want to be my girlfriend. She actually told me this to my face and left my place where I live. And what did I do? I kept on, 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 I kept on. And next thing I know, we're back in the relationship again. This is a key part to why people are poor. This kind of goes back to the comfort trap, but we're really about to get into it. One of the major reasons that people are poor is people avoid hard things. Now I'm about to moist men alert, moist men alert, moist men alert. Glendon is getting ready to start bragging. Moist men alert. So why am I so successful? I never stopped learning. I'm about to tell you something that I did. Uh, Lewis Howes, who's here on YouTube, he had a video on his channel talking about how to pre-sell an offer and make money before you actually made your product. I had to watch that video 10 times to get all of the steps correct. And the video was an hour long. So I invested 10 hours in watching this video over and over and over and over and over. And I finally got everything I needed and it worked. But I had to spend 25 hours, 10 hours watching the video, another 15 hours implementing the steps in the video. The average person who makes $35,000 a year, and I'm about to say this, they're not stupid, they're not dumb, um, that's not the issue. The issue goes back to willing to embrace hardship and having a certain amount of discipline. Once again, these people aren't stupid. They're not dumb. They're not trash people. They're not demo people. They're not worthless people, but they don't have the intestinal fortitude to brace, embrace difficult tasks. And this is reflected in our HB visa program. We have to import people for computer science, programming because we don't have enough homegrown talent to fulfill these occupations. Let me just say that again. There are numerous jobs that pay $100,000 a year. And I'm going to tell you something. If you're making $100,000 to $150,000 a year, you're going to possess a certain set of skills certain set of skills. So once again, moist men alert, moist men alert. Glendon is about to start bragging. So when I came here on YouTube in 2009, and a lot of people find that it's like, man, he's been doing this for 13 years. I did not know what I was doing. I knew from having a business, I knew that whatever I was doing, I had to market it. Market it. I had to, I already knew that. So that gave me a slight advantage because I understood things that I had to do that the average person doesn't know that they have to do. So I created this YouTube channel and in my first year, pure money, I made $62,000 a year, $62,000. And that was the best $62,000 ever because I was the factory. I was the manufacturing facility of my product. I didn't have to go to Uline. I didn't have to go to Alibaba. I was the creator and facilitator of my product. And once again, because I ran a business that I had to go to, you know, let me explain what I did in the storage auction business. And some people ask, are the videos still up? They're up. All the videos that I've ever made are still up on this channel. You just gotta 
go to the front channel page and go to the oldest video and you can find all of those older videos. Storage auction business in a nutshell. I would go to public storage, extra space storage, and they would have a sale every month of delinquent storage units. And I would buy these units and sell the contents of the units. Essentially, it was an eviction. That's what they were doing. They were evicting the contents out of that space so they can re-rent that space to someone else who would pay them. And I learned so much from that business. I learned how to like, I, this, this is a true story. I tried to become a writer two other times before I wrote my first book. And one thing that was missing, and it's something that I said in the beginning, discipline. The discipline of getting up every day, five to seven days a week, and posting Craigslist ads for years. I did that for years. That gave me the discipline to write and finish my first book. That was the missing thing. It wasn't a talent issue. It wasn't a desire issue. It was discipline. And this is one of the things that most of you don't have. You don't have discipline. You, you don't have the ability to stick with something, even though it may be tough, it may be harsh. You just, you will like fade. When I was in the military and we used to be singing cadence and we used to be running in formation, and then I, I had one uh, NCO, um, he was an he was, uh, E7, he was a character. And he'd be out there and we'd be like, <laughs> we're running, we're running, we're running, we're running, we're running, we're running. Those in the back are fading out. Those in the back are fading out. They fall into the wayside, they fall into the wayside. While we keep trucking, we keep trucking. They fall into the wayside. We fall, and we're singing this because he would make up cadences on the fly. And he would look back and he would see people. Because if you're running in formation, and th this is the thing, and this is something that happens in traffic. You ever notice like you're in traffic and then you reach a stop, then all of a sudden everyone is busting, breaking their neck and zooming, and then they stop again. See, when you have a formation, the people who are in the middle of the formation need to keep a consistent pace because if they start lagging, what it, as it works through the length of the formation, the people in the back would literally have to start running to keep up with the folks who are just walking, literally. So he would make up these cadences. They fall into the wayside, they fall into the wayside, they fall into the wayside. Then he would start calling out people. Carter fall into the wayside. Choo, choo, choo. Carter fall into the wayside. Choo, choo, choo. Rodriguez fall into the wayside. Do, do, do. Rodriguez fall into the wayside. Do, do, do. Circle back, circle back. Then the whole formation would circle back and then we would get behind Carter and Rodriguez and then they would be at the front and it's like, we're bringing them back home. We're bringing them back home. We're bringing them back home. Carter and Rodriguez to the front, to the front. Rock steady, rock steady, rock steady. It, we be doing this stuff every damn morning. Every damn morning. And this guy was a character. Like if you, if you faded out of formation, he would call you out. But then he would bring the formation back behind you and then you have all these people. Let's go, Carter. Let's go, Carter. Let's go, Rodriguez. Let's go, Rodriguez. And then the adrenaline, the pump would propel these people to be running their little hearts out. But see, you don't have a Sergeant De Jesus. He was De Jesus. Because, true story, radical little, little departure here. I'm from Alabama, and there was only two kind of people in Alabama, black people and white people, and we had some Asians. We had two Asians in my high school. I had never seen a Hispanic person in my life other than punch on chips. I've never seen a Hispanic person in real life. And so when I first saw him, I said, your name is the Jesus? And he said, where are you from? I said, Alabama. He said, I knew it. It is not the Jesus. It's the Jesus, boy. It's the Jesus. 
You know it. Say it. De Jesus. And I was like, okay, all right. Drill Sergeant, Sergeant Jesus. And he, he, he was a character. He was a character. And unlike in the military, you're out here by yourself. You don't have a Sergeant De Jesus circling the formation back behind you to give you energy, to uh, lift, uplift you, to keep you, to bring you back when you fade out. Because he would do this. We sometimes, we would be running, we would do this 12, 15 times on a morning run when people faded out. And we would put them at the front of the formation and we would push them and push them to run. And one thing uh, Sergeant Jesus would do is every evening at five o'clock, he would have running practice. He would take the people who were struggling to keep up in formation and they would run again. Practice conduct practice for the people who couldn't keep up and that this is really important on Lewis Howe's video how to sell products I had to practice NFL teams practice more than they play NFL teams practice five days a week but they only play one day a week and the better the practice is the better that they perform on Sunday or Monday or Thursday night. Practice. And this is, comes back to discipline. This comes back to discipline. Um, one of the things that I did, moist men alert, moist men alert, Glendon is about to start bragging, is I knew that I had to practice. So when I first started, I used to make videos five or seven days a week consistently putting up videos, consistently putting up videos, practicing, 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 practicing. And until I had that controversy, that was the biggest growth spurt that I've ever had in my 13 years on YouTube. 30,000 people in two months. That's the biggest growth spurt that I've ever had. I've had growth spurts of maybe nine or 10,000 people in one month. But 30,000 in two months, biggest growth spurt ever. And one of the things that I knew, because I did that video intentionally, <clears throat> is I understand how YouTube works. You know, when I was on the Lead Bit Show, and I actually said, we will see the results of this six months from now. This is another thing that I have that's an advantage. I know that when you conduct an experiment or when you run some experiments, you need months of data. You can't do it in a few weeks or a few months. And this is what everyone is chasing. This kind of goes back to discipline. So I did that video in October, November, December, January, February. I've got two more months. And all of the, uh, I lost uh, about 500 subscribers on this channel and about 500 subscribers on Hustlers Kung Fu. And all of them have been replaced by way more subscribers. So we got two more months <clears throat> for this experiment to reach its conclusion. And I will say the experiment was a success because, and let's, how do we measure success? We measure success in money. Um, last month I made $15,000 here on YouTube. Most money I've ever made on YouTube. So from a financial standpoint, that experiment is and was a success. Now, here's another reason that people don't make money. They're looking for quick, easy, fast, simple solutions to make a lot of money, right? They don't exist. They don't exist. And that is the guns back to one, understanding what you're dealing with understanding because I'm gonna do a video uh, talking about the car until I actually put content here on YouTube about the car rental business actual honest content it didn't exist here on YouTube it didn't exist so there are many people that are under the delusion that they can find actionable real content for the free 99 here on YouTube. And let's discuss that. 
if you can find all of this actionable, straightforward content that will improve your financial life, why do 75% over 100 million people make less than $35,000 a year? <clears throat> if it's so easy to find how to do X, Y, and Z online for free. Understand, these people are looking. Excuse me. They're looking. They're looking for a way out. They're looking for an answer. They're looking for a solution. But they don't understand what they're up against. And this is one of the big things because, once again, um, I took this YouTube channel from 62,000 to millions in about seven years. So this is another thing that people don't understand. To go to engineering school, it's going to take you four or five years to become an engineer. And then there's going to take you two, two years of on the job training to become a full fledged engineer. Seven years. See, the most educated people make the most money. Let me say that again. The most educated people make the most money. And a lot of people don't understand that because they're looking for tactics and short term strategies versus a long term educational thing. Like, I can tell you why Kevin Samuels blew up. That one video, you're best at average. That video with the world star. And here's a little YouTube lesson. When a YouTube video exits the YouTube um, ecosystem and goes out into Google, let's say, let's say you put up a video, right? And then <clears throat> you had 10 blogs, maybe five, um, news outlets or you know 10 blogs five news outlets and other um internet assets that are not on youtube that are talking about your video that will push your video through uh, through the stratosphere that will push your video like you wouldn't believe i've seen it happen several times there's a channel called dad how do i dad google it and many articles, many news outlets wrote articles about this channel, and this guy got a million subscribers in like three months. So if you can put out content that gets outside of the YouTube echo ecosystem, and then it goes out into the internet, and then the internet starts to push all of this traffic to that video, the video will explode the channel will explode. That's what happened to Kevin Samuels. All it takes is one video to make your channel go boom. Just one, just one. So once again, how do I know this? I've been doing YouTube 13 years. I can go and look at a YouTube channel and one of the things I always do, and you know, since we're speaking to Kevin Samuels, go to his YouTube channel and go from, look at his oldest videos. And Kevin's up there. One, two, three. I mean, seriously, what you will see, the transformation of Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels went from, like, seriously, the videos are still up. To his credit, he left these tr horrible videos still up. They're up. And you can see the transformation of Kevin Samuels. And this is what you have to do. <clears throat> you cannot be the person that you are and expect to become successful. Once again, the most educated people make the most money, whether it's through an informal education aspect or through its college. Once again, um, one of the reasons that I make so much money is because I've never stopped learning. When I came to YouTube, I didn't know this. Like before YouTube changed the platform, all of my early videos had these black bars on the side and I couldn't figure out why these videos had black bars on the side because I didn't know anything about making videos. 
I was shooting videos in what's called standard definition, which is a square block. I was not shooting videos in HD, which is the rectangular block, 720, 1080p, and now all the videos I put up are in 4K, high definition. I didn't understand that because I didn't know what I was doing, but I kept on, I kept on, I kept on, I kept on. Because see, th this is one of the things, you have to be indefeatable, indefeatable, if that's a word. You cannot be fatigued. You cannot fall to the wayside. You can't fall to the wayside. You cannot fall to the wayside. You have to keep going. I don't care if your legs are burning. I don't care if your heart's about to burst. I don't care if you have sweat dripping off your ears. You got to keep going. And this is something the average person doesn't have, which is why you cannot remain average if you want to be successful. You cannot, and this is a point that I get. Uh, someone put up a video talking about, like, I'm about to speak harshly. I'm gonna speak harshly. Like, many things that you can do with no money to make money, unless you invest years, I'm talking five, six, seven years, you're not gonna make any decent money. You wanna know why? because money has gravity. I was able to spend $400,000 and get my car business above where most Toro hosts and stuff were who've been on the platform for five, six, seven years. I was able to pass them with revenue wise in eight months. See, th this is one of the things and we're gonna be talking about this on the corporate game. Uh, I got a video set up that um, I'm gonna be talking about things that you need to do, things you need to understand about starting a business with money and starting a business without money. You can start a business without money and make millions, but it's gonna take time. It's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna take a lot of time. It's gonna take a ton of time. So one of the things I want you guys to understand is when you look at people who are poor, they don't have an income problem. They have a skill set problem. And as I like, you know, I've not even filled out a resume. I don't even have a resume. I don't even know what I would put on the resume. For fun, I may actually put together a resume and just put myself out there and see what kind of jobs I can get just for fun. Because one of the things that makes me successful is I have a lot of different skill sets. Like if I wanted to take a job on creating videos, I have a friend, his name is Travis Chambers. You can Google him, Chambers Media. Chambers Media gets a million dollars to make a YouTube or an online commercial, a million dollars. If I wanted to do that, I have enough skill sets. It would take me about three years to get rolling, but that's something I could do if I wanted to because I have 13 years of video production experience. And not only that, I have 13 years of experience making money with video. 13 years, 13 years. I've got the tax records to prove it. So that right there is a very unique skill set because when you like, if I pull up an ad looking for someone to help me produce videos, it would be real hard to find someone because there's not that many people who have these video skills that I have. And this is something that you, yes you, can teach yourself. I taught myself. You know, I have been a member of masterminds and some groups, but most of it, I've just taught myself trial and error, putting up videos, seeing what works, what doesn't work. Like the video that I put up before this one. Um, I'm beginning to see that the people, the nerd tribe loves the videos talking about, you know, and there, there's so many videos coming talking about the chaos that is happening in the economy, uh, the, re, the global reset. And like these videos, it's talking about why people are poor. People are poor because they have a skill gap problem. 
It's not an income problem, it's a skill gap problem. They don't have the marketable skills. I know, and I can say this just off the top of my head, that if I reached out to put myself on the market, I would get a job making minimum 200K. Minimum 200K with my skill sets. I know that without even testing the waters, but you wanna know why I say 200K? Because a company will hire you and they want to 10x their investment. So if they're paying me 200K, I'm doing $2 million worth of work. So I, will, I don't have a job because there's no company that will pay me my true value because they've got to get a return for hiring me and they've got to make money. I understand that. I'm not mad at the game. I understand the game. I embrace the game. When I hire people, I do the same thing. That's the game. But one of the big issues that we see with people, they don't have skills. They don't have skills. And one of the things that I consistently see is people, where people spend their time is where their money is. And there's this app called B-I-G-O. It's just a hot mess. It's just a bunch of people who are doing nothing. There's girls on there doing yoga, there's people singing, there's people preaching. But for the most part, these folks are absolutely doing nothing constructive. And this is where people are spending their time. Because when you start to talk about the lower economic strata from an intellectual standpoint, these people, like, I'm about to make a little departure here. I, I should go around my, my place and show you all the art that I have on the walls. I'm a big believer in art. Every place that I live, I've had art on the walls. Now, why am I talking? Most NFT scams are money grabs. You wanna know why? Because the average person doesn't appreciate art. That's why I feel that the NFT thing is just a money grab because there's, there's different layers to NFTs. There's um, properties that are selling high-end, one-of-a-kind pieces by reputable artist that's a different nft but like there's this one guy wholesale the millions he's put together some nfl nfts it's just garbage it's junk this is nothing that someone's gonna pay millions of dollars for down the road because it's just garbage uh band man kevo he's put up some it's just a money grab and a lot of people are going to spend a whole bunch of money because they're uneducated they're uneducated the mona lisa is worth a hundred mil, like the, if they had to put a price on it, cause it's considered to be priceless. The Mona Lisa is worth like half a billion. That one piece of art, one piece of art, that one piece of verified, cause here's the thing with art. You must be able to trace its lineage. You can trace the Mona Lisa back to the artist. Every hand, everyone who's owned it, there's documentation, we've owned it. It was sold to these people. There is a kind of like blockchain. Real verifiable art pieces have blockchain-like information. Uh, it's called, it's not that it's called their pedigree. I think it's called their providence. Art has a chain that goes back to the artist and everyone who's owned this piece of art up into the museum that it's sitting in. And the Mona Lisa's worth like a half a billy. Half a billy. And 90% of the stuff out there in the NFLT land is just a money grab. It's just hot, it's hip, and people are spending money on stuff they don't understand. I am not spending any money on an NFL, NFL, NFT. I would go out and buy real art before I went out and bought an NFLT because I'm educated on what art is. But once again, Skill sets, education, skill sets, education, skill sets, education. Once again, these things you can't replace because once you get into understanding where you are, understanding the marketplace, understanding your skill sets and how they relate to the marketplace, that's where you can make some money. And I'm about to say something that's going to sound crazy. If people would educate themselves and not take the easy way out, not look for the cheap way out, not look for a strategy, not look for a hack or attack, 
everyone in the United States could be making 100K a year. That, let, me, let me say that again. If people would work to their fullest capacity, Carter fade into the wayside. Let's circle back, circle back. Let's go, Carter. Let's go, Regine. If you had that kind of push, everyone in the United States in the working place could be making six figures. And I'm about to say something that's going to sound a little disrespectful. When I was a kid, if you saw someone over the age of 30 working in a restaurant, they were the manager. Because when I was a kid, only kids worked fast food. Only kids. Now you've got people out here who are working these low wage jobs and expecting to have a livable wage. These jobs weren't designed to support you. These jobs weren't designed to buy you a house. These jobs were designed for kids. And they haven't changed. So if you're working at McDonald's or Zaxby's or Arby's or Wendy's or Burger King, it is what it is. And unless you're a manager, you're not going to make any significant money ever. It's just not happening because those jobs weren't designed to enrich you. Truth be told, there's very few jobs that were designed to enrich you. Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, became a billionaire because of a job. You know, there's literally maybe five, 600 jobs that will do that for you. <laughs> five or 600 jobs. The CEO of Google is worth like 600 million, 400 million short of a billion. He may get to billionaire status with working at Google. These jobs, these are not like normal jobs. These are not jobs where you take weekends off. As the CEO, you're on, you're working seven days a week. You're always on call, but that's why you get that long money. And that's another reason. People don't want to work. Like um, going back to Timothy Ward, Sheeta on the loose, um, the upgrade, and there was another guy. These folks have given up on the American dream. They've given up on themselves because the American dream is alive and well for those who are willing to work for it. The operating word there is work for it. It's, it's available if you're willing to work for it. But during this global reset, which is on and popping, we're gonna see the heroes and we're gonna see the sheroes and we're gonna see the losers. And the average person is gonna be taking that big L because the average person doesn't understand what they're against. They don't understand what's happening. They have no clue to what's about to drop. So once again, uh, I'm going to be sending out an email today. Uh, I'm getting ready to start this training. I'm getting ready to start pushing this uh, new platform. So be on the lookout for that because I have a lot of people who are asking me about that. And I have a lot of people who are interested in these cars. All right, if you're not in the state of Georgia, um, I'm pretty much, because here's the situation. If you're not here in Georgia, you're gonna have to car transport it. And you know, you mean you have to buy the car without test driving it. And a lot of, you know, a lot of y'all ain't gonna do that. <laughs> a lot of y'all ain't gonna do that. So I'm getting ready to uh, go hot and heavy with that because March is Tuesday. So I will be launching some stuff. I will be um, really going hot and heavy. I will be, um, putting some stuff out. So look for that. Look for that. So that's all I got. So once again, reason people are poor isn't because of income. It's because they lack skills. And this is a big, big problem. If you go ahead and skill yourself up and give yourself more skills, you will make more money. It's just that simple. So that's all I got for you guys. We'll see you in the next one.